video is about forces in equilibrium for ACE physics level. Here is a table with the video sequence. After a quick review about Newton's first law of motion in FBD, I will solve six structure questions from past physics exams. If you are a student taking this course, I would suggest that you print out all questions from available websites with code, codes provided on this slide. Or just watch along with a scientific calculator and write down important notes as I explain each question. Some questions in this video meant to be similar with the purpose that you pause the video and try yourself before checking your answers with mine. Forces in Equilibrium Review Force is a push or pull capable of changing a body's state of rest or motion. Example of forces diagrams in physics. Here is a stationary small box with 7 newtons weight suspended by two strings T1 and T2. And here is a box pulled up a slope by a string with constant velocity. Both are examples of Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object is in equilibrium when it's at rest or moving with constant velocity. The free body diagram and vectors triangle method are the best strategies to answer questions related to Newton's first law of motion. Just follow these steps. First, draw a grid with a horizontal or X and a vertical or Y lines from the center of the object. Follow my pointer here on this example. So this is the Y grid and this is the X grid or horizontal. For the box on the incline, so the, the grid will be tilted. Um, this one is the vertical and this is the horizontal. Second step, draw arrows to represent all forces acting on the object. So back to this example, this is the force, the arrow they represent, the force T1. This is the arrow that represents uh, force T2, or tension. And this is the arrow that represents the weight. So on this example, we already have all the arrows indicated here. Uh, for the third step, draw horizontal and vertical components arrows for each force that are off the grid. So here is the grid and uh, the weight is aligned with the Y direction, but T1 and T2 are not. For this reason, we need to break those forces into components. So here is the horizontal component for T1 and the vertical component for T1. And this is the horizontal component for T2 and this is the vertical component for T2. So because the weight here is off the grid, so then we need to find the components as well. So this is the horizontal component for the weight and this is the vertical component for the weight. So as you see, now all forces, they align with on the grid. The fourth step is to set up two equations to solve unknown variables. So, for example, this is one equation. The sum of forces up is equal to the sum of forces down. So for this example here, we need to forget those arrows that are off the grid and work just with arrows that align on the grid. 
So for the vertical direction, we have two forces up. So the sum of forces up is equal to the sum of forces down, which is just one, which is the weight. And uh, another equation is this one. So the sum of forces to the right is equal to the sum of all forces to the left. So for the right here, we have this force, and on the left, you have this force. So likewise, for the box on incline, so T, the tension, is equal to the horizontal component of the weight. And um, the normal, or R, is equal to the vertical component of the weight. Question from October, November 2005, paper 02, question number 3. A stone on a string is made to travel along a horizontal circular path, as shown in this picture. And this stone has a constant speed. So let me pause here to explain a couple of things. So let me look here the stone in this position. So I'm going to draw a vector to represent the velocity. So this is the velocity. And I'm going to call this velocity v. Now, at this point right here, the velocity changed in direction. And right here, change direction again. And one more time. There we go. So, if you are taking notes, here is a good one for you. Velocity on a circular motion is always tangent to the path. Now, let me define acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. Is velocity over time. Now, use your definition to explain whether the stone is accelerating. Velocity is change in direction, tangent with the circular path. Therefore, the stone is accelerating. I know. Sounds crazy, right? But let me explain a little better with this example. If you are driving on a straight road at constant velocity of 40 miles per hour, your acceleration is zero since there is no change in velocity, right? Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. There is no change in velocity. You, you are not accelerating. So if you are taking notes, because you are keeping the same velocity as you drive on a straight road, you are not accelerating. The magnitude of the vector remains the same. And the direction of the vector is also the same. So yeah, there is no change of velocity, so there is no acceleration. However, if you make a turn with the same velocity, you will change your car direction. Look at this. So this is a turn. So now, let me put your car right here. So look at the direction of the vector. It's changing. Right here, it's changing. In this case, you are accelerating, even though your speedometer is showing the same value, 40 miles per hour, because your car direction has changed. I hope this example clarifies to you why, the, in the case of the stone, is accelerating, even though there is no change in velocity. Now, question C. The stone has a weight of 5 newtons. When the string makes an angle of 35 degrees to the vertical, the tension in the string is 6.1 newtons, as shown in this picture. 
the term, the resultant force acting on the stone in the position shown. So, like we did in the beginning of the video, we need to draw the lines here, which is already here. So, now we are going to draw the vectors. So, this one here is the component of 6.1 newtons and this the, the vertical component, and this is the horizontal component. So, the vertical component, we are using cosine of this angle because it's close by. So, this 6.1 newtons times cosine of 35 degrees is 5 newtons. And for the horizontal one, is sine of 35, which is 3.5 newtons. So now that we have the components of the tension on this string, we can use this equation. So the sum of the forces up, which is just 5 newtons, is equal to the sum of force down, which is 5 newtons. So what means is in this direction, in the y direction, the resultant force here is zero. There is no force acting in this direction. Even though there is two forces, but they are equal in value and opposite direction. So, in the x direction, there is no force acting in this direction, right? For the for the uh, to the right and to the left, you have 3.5 newtons, which is the x component of 6.1. So in the x direction, you have a force of 3.5 newton. So to find the magnitude of this force is, we are using Pythagoras theorem, right? So, the square of the resultant force is equal to the sum of the square of x and y, which is 3.5. So, the magnitude of the force is 3.5, and the direction of the force is horizontal to the center of the rotation, right here. Question from May, June 2010, paper 23. It stated the two conditions that must be satisfied for a body to be in equilibrium. The sum of all forces is zero, and the sum of all torques or moment is zero. B. Three coplanar forces act on a body that is in equilibrium. Describe how to draw a vector triangle to represent these forces. So here is one force. This is the second one, aligned tip to tail. The resultant one is the one that connects the lonely tail with the lonely tip. Number one. Each force is represented by an arrow. Number two, each arrow has magnitude and direction because it's a vector. And number three, align all arrows head to tail to form this triangle. Next question, state how the triangle confirms that the forces are in equilibrium. Close the triangle with the third arrow. C. A weight of 7 newtons hangs vertically by three strings A, B, and A, C, showing this picture. For the weight to be in equilibrium, the tension in string A, B is T1 and the string A, C is T2. On this picture, 
draw a vector triangle to determine the magnitude of T1 and T2. Okay, so first let's draw the lines, the, the vertical line, and this is the horizontal line. So as you see, T1 and T2, they are off this grid. To bring the to the grid, we need to determine the components of each tension. So here is T1x, and this is T1y. This is T2x, and this is T2y. Now, what we are going to do is determine the angle of this triangle. So, if this is 90 degrees, and this is 35, so this angle is 55. So, if on this side is 90 degrees right here, this is 50, therefore, the missing angle is 40. Next, what we are going to do is two tables. In this table, to determine the components T1x and T1y, is T1 cosine of 55. So we are looking at this triangle right here. And T1y is T1 sine of the same angle, which is 55. For this um, triangle for tension 2, this is the table. So, it's the same idea, but different angles. Cosine of 40 and sine of 40. We cannot calculate the values because we don't know the magnitude of vectors T1 and T2. Next step, I'm going to use the equations. So, this is the equation that says the sum of forces in the horizontal direction is equal to each other, or the sum of all forces acting on the horizontal direction is zero, which is the same as this equation. And the sum of forces up is equal to the sum of all forces down. So, what we have here on the horizontal is just two forces, T1x and T2x. So, they are equal to each other. And in the vertical direction, you have three forces. Two of them at the same direction, upward. So, we need to add T1y plus T2y equal to the opposite one, which is 7, like this. So, now that we know that T1x is right here, this value, T2x is this. Let's do the substitution. And likewise, we're going to do the same way on the vertical direction. Okay, so now we have two equations and two unknown, T1 and T2. We just need to rearrange everything and do the right substitutions. For example, we can uh, rearrange this equation for T1 and do the substitution here for T1 with what we have obtained from this side of the story times sine of 55 and repeat the same values here. Uh, you can do it directly on your calculator, but for the purpose of explaining the steps, how I solve this problem, I am using very easy way to demonstrate to you. Then, uh, sine of 55 over cosine of 55 is tangent of 55. I can do this way or you can just calculate everything separated. I just found that to be easier for me to do this way. And then, um, applying on your calculator, you should have results very similar to this. Then we can calculate for T2. 
So now that we know the value of T2, we can replace on this equation and calculate the value of T1. So this way, this is the value of T1, this is the value of T2. D, by reference to this diagram, <clears throat> suggests why the weight could not be supported with the strings AB and AC both horizontal. The direction of the weight is vertical downward, so the horizontal components have no, um, no, does not affect the horizontal and vertical components. They are isolated from each other. They don't mix. A partial question from October, November 2010, paper 22, 1B. A block of wood, halfway 25 newtons, is held stationary on a slope by means of a string, as shown in this picture. The tension in the string is T, and the slope pushes on the block with a force R, that is normal to the slope, either by scale drawing or on figure, on figure 1.1 or by calculation, the term the tension T in the string. Okay, I'm doing by calculation. So, the steps are first draw the components of the weight 25 newtons because is off the grid. So this is the um, vertical line and this is horizontal line. So the, this force is off the grid. For this reason, we need to break into its components. So this is, if I call this weight Fg, force to gravity with 25 newtons, I'm gonna call Fg y. And the horizontal one, or on the x direction, FGX. So the angle here is 35 degrees, because this angle is 35 degrees. And FGX is 25 Newton times sine of 35, because it is... Um, the opposite of this angle. So if you place this vector down here and close this tri triangle, so um, this force Fgx is opposite of 35. So that's why we are using sine. And uh, doing your calculation in your calculator, so you should have 14.34 newtons. That's the the value of the weight horizontal component. So, to answer this question, how to calculate this, the value of T, which is the tension on the string that is suspended, is holding the, the, the box on the slide. So this block of wood is stationary. So, for this reason, the sum of all forces acting on the horizontal is zero. Which means that the, all the forces to the right is equal to the left, so, or vice versa. So, we have here this force, which is Fgx, to the left is equal to T, which is the force on the right. So because the box, the wood, the block of wood is stationary, so the tension is equal to the value of the horizontal component of the block weight, which is Fgx. So 14 newtons. That's the answer. Question 
Question from October, November 2011, paper 23, question 1. Distinguish between scalars and vectors. Scalars have magnitude and vectors have magnitude and direction. B. Underline all the vector quantities in the list below. Acceleration, yes is a vector. Energy is not. Momentum, yes. Power is not. Weight, yes, because weight is a force. C. A force of 7.5 newtons acts at 40 degrees to the horizontal, as shown in this picture. Calculate the component of the force that acts horizontally and vertically. Okay, very simple. So here is the component that is the horizontal component, and this is the vertical component. So the horizontal component is the value of the this resultant here, which is 7.5 times cosine of 40, and the result is 5.7, or you can use two decimal places, Newtons. For vertical, we have the same thing, but the opposite trig function. Now we have sine. So is if you do your computation on your calculator, you should have 4.8, and you can use 4.82 if you want three significant figures or two decimal places. Now. Uh, question D. Two strings support a load of weight 7.5 newtons as shown in this picture. Very similar to a question that we did in this video. So this is the one that I would like that you pause the video and try and then um, give yourself some time and then follow along your answers with mine. One string has a tension T1 and is at angle 50 degrees to the horizontal. The other string has a tension T2 and is at angle 40 degrees with the horizontal. The object is in equilibrium and determine the values T1 and T2 by using a vector triangle or by resolving forces or calculation. Again, I'm going to use calculation. So please pause the video and try before check your answers with mine. Okay, so here is how I solve. Same steps. First, draw a line, a vertical line, and here we already have the horizontal line. Now, for this vector T1, we are going to determine the components. So this is T1x. And this is T1y. Likewise for T2, this is T2x and this is T2y. So the next step is to set up both tables. T1x, T1, T1y, T2x, T2y. Based on their position to the respect to the angle so T1x is T1 cosine of 50. And T2x is also cosine but 40. See? Same close by, close by the angle. T1y is the opposite of this angle. So then we are using sine. We can't solve this because we don't have the values for T1. Then, we are going to use those two equations. The sum of the forces to the right is equal to the sum to the force to the left. The sum of forces up is equal to the sum of forces down. We are doing this because the problem states that the object is in equilibrium. So, for horizontally, T1x is equal to T2x and vertically 
d1y plus d2y is equal to the weight, which is 7.5. Now, doing your substitutions here, uh, t1x and t2x, and do the substitution for this equation as well. Then, rearrange this equation for t1 and do your substitution on the side of this page, this is light. Again, I'm using tangent here, sine of 50, cosine of 50, why not? And then just type on your calculator everything and you should have values very similar to these numbers, 0 0.9 and 0 0.64. Add them and calculate for T2, which is 4.82. Now, use the value for T2 to calculate the value for T1. So, T1 is 5.74. So, solving by calculation is T1 is 5.7 or 5.74, and T2 is 4.8 or 4.82. Question from May, June 2012, paper 22, question 3. A. State Newton's first law. A body stay at rest or in motion with constant velocity unless acted by an external force. B. A log of mass 450 kilograms is pulled up a slope by a wire attached to a motor, as shown in this picture. The angle that the slope makes with the horizontal is 12 degrees. The frictional force acting on the log is 650 newtons. The log travels with constant velocity. I. With a reference to the motion of the log, discuss whether the log is in equilibrium. Log travels with constant velocity and zero acceleration. With zero acceleration, the resultant force is zero. Double I. Calculate the tension in the wire. So you don't have this picture on your paper. But I add this picture here because I want to draw the free body diagram. So, the log is on the incline. So, here is the horizontal direction or the horizontal line. And the vertical line is, is like this, but it's not showing here. Okay. So, this is the weight of the log, straight down. And this is the component, the vertical component of the weight, which is, I'm calling weight Fg. So, the horizontal component, the vertical component is Fgy. And the horizontal component is Fgx. And uh, this this arrow represents the tension of the wire. And this light blue arrow represents the frictional force between the log and the surface of the incline. So, the velocity is constant. Therefore, the tension so, the forces to the right is equal to the sum of forces to the left. So, T is equal to Fgx plus Ff, which is the horizontal component of the weight and the frictional force. So, to make it simple for the, your calculation, so Fgx... Um, we don't have directly the 
value of the weight, we have the mass, which is 450 kilograms right here. So to calculate the weight, you'll be 450 times 9.81 meters per second squared. So this here, those two, those two numbers are the weight. Times sine of the incline, which is 12 degrees, plus the frictional force. So when you add all them, you get 1,568 newtons. So this is the value of the tension. Triple I, state and explain whether the gain in the potential energy per unit time of the log is equal to the output power of the motor. Work done against frictional force between log and slope, output power is greater than the gain in potential energy per unit of time.